And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within, and on the back side, scaled with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? No man in heaven nor on earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. And I wept much because no man was found worthy to open and read the book, neither to look thereon. And one of the elders saith to me, Weep not, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb, as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and four and twenty elders fell down before the lamb, every one having harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred, tongue, and people, and nation, and hast made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. And I beheld, and I heard the loud voice of many angels round about the throne, and the beast and the elders, and the number of them was ten thousand times ten thousand and thousands of thousands saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. And every creature which was in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them heard I saying, Blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb forever and ever. And the four beasts said, Amen, and the four and twenty elders fell down and worshipped him that lived forever and ever. Oftentimes we skip that and go right to chapter 6 in Revelations. Um, but I think this pretty much explains it. This is a place where the afterlife... You know, where are we? We're in a realm, in a spiritual realm, where those who are slain live, where nothing is really dead. But that the people here and the creatures here in this realm, in this dimension, are to take possession of the earth and everything in it. And the Lamb has seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, which goes throughout all the earth, the seven spirits. God is seven spirits. And he has made us unto our God, kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. And I beheld and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne and the beasts and the elders. And the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands. I think this is a way of saying almost incalculable amount of, of, of people redeemed by the Lamb to God. To possess the seven spirits and the power thereof. So, therefore, they would reign upon the earth. But where are they now? And I saw on the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written, and on the back side, sealed with seven seals. So where are the seven seals? And where is John now, who is receiving this revelation? And as a witness to the seven seals that they must be opened because there are seven spirits of God that have gone throughout the earth and because the lamb is the only one worthy to open the seals and the lamb has the only one that has redeemed mankind 
not just to God, but to make all those of the Lamb out of every kindred, tongue, and people, and nation has made us all kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. But where are they now? Not on the earth. All this is going on in the heavens, i.e. in other dimensions. It's not come to the earth. The war is really going on in the heavens. There had to be a a lamb slain from the foundation of the earth who could redeem everything upon the earth and who could open the seals so that redeemed man would be kings and priests and ruling upon the earth, but who would they rule over? Certainly not all mankind was redeemed. What would they rule over if everyone was a king and a priest? Where would the flock be? The seven spirits rule over it, but what are these people that are going to rule over the earth? Well, they're not here. This conversation is taking place elsewhere where the dead live. I told you there is no death. There is the other side. These must return to the earth with a shout the redeemed and all who are left upon the earth at this time will reappear on the earth and rule with a rod of iron, which is the implementation of the seven spirits of God in authority, which I contend is another dimension, more akin to this dimension, not the dimension that is here now. And that The tree of life that extends life is the dimensional change. But already, because the lamb was slain and rose again and redeemed all mankind, all who would believe, to God, making them rulers, and they'll rule upon the earth, wherever the earth is whatever that means, but this conversation is happening in another dimension, not on the earth. No one has seen God at any time, meaning him that sits on the throne, God, could only be seen in another dimension because no one in this dimension has seen God at any time because he doesn't exist in a visible form in this dimension. So this is all happening in a spiritual realm where the dead live and all manner of other creatures where these elders had lived perhaps upon the earth and then graduated to the next level. And they, um, and, and the Lamb reigns over heaven and is to reign over the earth and over all people. Because simply, without the Lamb, there is no redemption to God, meaning there is no life. One cannot live forever and ever unless one is redeemed by the Lamb. If one refuses to be redeemed by the Lamb, then oh well, there is no life. It assumes that there will be kingdoms going on to be reigned over and that the earth is a prize. The earth is to be redeemed by God through the Lamb and is a prize That creation itself in this dimension is a prize. It's where the real drama takes place. And is the focus of all that is in heaven. And that the main event is really going to be men's hearts. Oh, now stop it, Molly. Every 
every time we get going with this subject. There has to be some sort of dog intervention. And then when the seals are open, of course, the lamb opens the seals. And the people experience God's wrath upon the earth. And when the sixth seal is open, it says, And the heaven departed like a scroll when it was rolled together. A dimensional shift. And every mountain and island were moved out of their places. Pole shift. And the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich and the mighty men, the chief captains and the mighty men and, the, and every bondman, every free man uh, had themselves in the dens in the rocks of the mountains. And said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. So from God and the Lamb both. For the day of his wrath shall come and who, who shall be able to stand? And it goes on. Redeeming the children of Israel. Redeeming the multitude. And when the seventh seal was opened, there was a silence in heaven for the space of a half an hour. And I saw the seven angels which stood before God and to them that were given seven trumpets. And another angel came and stood on the altar having a golden censer. And there was given to him much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense, which came with the prayers of the saints, ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. And the angel took the censer and filled it with the fire and altar, cast it into the earth. And there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and an earthquake. And the seven angels, which had the seven trumpets, prepared themselves to sound. And the first angel sounded, and there followed hail and fire uh, mingled about with blood, and they were cast upon the earth, and a third part of the trees were burned up, and all the green grass was burned up. And the second angel uh, sounded, and as it were, a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea, and the third part of the sea became blood. And the third part of the creatures which were in the sea and had life died, and the third part of the ships were destroyed, and the third angel sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven, burning as it were a lamp, and it fell upon the third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of the waters, and the name of the star was called Wormwood, and a third part of the waters became Wormwood, and many men died of the waters because they were made bitter, or poison. And the fourth angel sounded, and the third part of the sun was smitten, and the third part of the moon, and the third part of the stars, so as the third part of them was darkened, and the day shone not for a third part of it, and the night likewise. And I beheld and heard as an angel flying through the midst of the heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth by reason of the other voices of the trumpet of the three angels, which are yet to sound. And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven to the earth, And to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit, and a smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and upon them that was given power. The scorpions uh, of the earth have power. And it was commanded of them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months, and their torment was the torment of a scorpion when it strikes a man. And in those days shall men seek death and shall not find it, and shall desire to die, and death will flee from them. And the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle, and on their heads it was like crowns of gold, 
and their faces were as faces of men, and they had hair like the hair of women, and their teeth were as the teeth of lions, and they had breastplates, and the breastplates were iron, and the sound of their wings was the sound of chariots and many horses running to battle, and they had tails like unto scorpions, where there were stings in their tails, and they had the power was to hurt men five months, and they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue his name is Apollyon. One woe is past, and behold, there come two woes more thereafter. And the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the, of the golden altar, which is before God, saying to the sixth angel which had the trumpet, Loose the four angels which are bound uh, in the great river Euphrates. And the four angels were loosed, uh, which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year, for to slay a third part of men. So it would be about three billion, two two and a half billion people. And the number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000, and I heard a number of them. And thus I saw the horses of the vision, and them that sat on them, having breastplates of fire and jacinth and brimstone. And the heads of horses were as heads of lions, and out of their mouths issued fire and smoke and brimstone. By these three was a third part of men killed. So that would be... um, Well, if you add that, then you're up to four or five billion. By the fire and the smoke and by the brimstone, which was issued out of their mouths, for the power was in their mouth and in their tails, for their tails were as unto serpents. <clears throat> they had heads, and with them uh, they do hurt. And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of their works of their hands, that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and wood, and neither can see nor hear or walk. Neither repented they of their murders, nor their sorceries, nor their fornication, nor of their thefts. And the vengeance goes on, and men do not repent, thus they are not redeemed by the Lamb. So thus the seals are opened as vengeance to set forth in motion a series of events. Oh, and you can also take it not cumulatively. If you like, you can say the third part of men that's repeated is not another third, but the same third mentioned two verses earlier. That's fine. Needless to say, the angels of the Euphrates, the four angels that are loosed, have one purpose in mind, to kill um, two and a half billion people. And to make sure that it's known that it is... um, these are angels that are loose to do it. Lest anyone think that touched by an angel is just a lot of touchy-feely angels that have tremendous compassion. Now, there are judgment angels and warring angels and angels that are sent just to do the wrath of God, i.e. vengeance, because the people here left upon the earth to do the sorceries, meaning Babylon, meaning the business world, I guess, um, if that's really their system, then they're guilty of having harmed God's children. So God is simply avenging his own, and he's waited till the end of time, to the very last moment, before everything is rolled up. We already see that part of this is a dimensional shift, where the stars are rolled up as a scroll, and there's darkness that comes over the earth for, for days, perhaps three days. And after that, the sun is dark, and the moon is dark, and you know, things are dark. But eventually, the, the earth goes into a state of light, like the whole dimension shifts. And you have to stop thinking in terms of earth because in Revelation 5, where are we? Um, We are not really upon upon the earth. That's not where John is, where he's witnessing all this. He's in the kingdom of heaven, but it's not on on the earth. No, the lamb will reign over the earth forever and ever. But the earth is going to be a metaphor for all that God created, not just the earth as you see it, the earth, the orb in space. It's more like creation, rather than the earth. So everything will conform to God's way or be cut off. And if you add it all up, you know, cumulatively, you get about um, 9.5% of all the 
humans are, are, are all that's left, about 9.5%. If you don't take it cumulatively, you get up to about 30 or 40%. No, you get, I'm sorry, you, you get to exactly 33.3%. It just depends how you take those numbers. If all there is left is 33% or a third of what was there, and then only a part of that is a remnant, and um, the rest go to the pit, there's not much in the way of population uh, problems. And I contend that the, you know, the seals are open, and um, beware of the seventh seal. Because it is purely the wrath of God. It is death to mankind and torture and then death. And you wouldn't do that unless people had pretty much all gone the way of Satan, gone the way of sorcery, gone the way of doing harm to lambs in order to boost themselves. If they had just boosted themselves and left God's children alone, perhaps there wouldn't be a need for vengeance. But then again, there wouldn't be a need for them in the first place because if it's not of God, it doesn't need to exist. You could even make a case for them not existing to begin with, only as sort of parasites who happen to be given charge of the earth. In other words, backwards, that parasites should rule over. Parasites should be the host. And yet they need lambs to power their um, you know, abominations. And God is simply saying, you will not use my people to power your abominations anymore. You know, you will experience what you have brought upon my people and you have killed them for no reason. And thus, I will bring upon you the kind of horror that you brought upon them and even the balances. It's not that God is evil. It's just that the debt must be paid. Whatever we do, beloved, must be paid. If you go out and slay a bunch of people because they slayed your family, you know, then you will be slain too. In other words, the whole thing perpetuates. Jesus came to put an end to all that. Now, to put an end to the way of vengeance, to the way of vendetta. Only through forgiveness can you be forgiven and thus ascend out of this, this, this hellish mess here. So I think that's pretty simple, pretty straightforward, and um, worth mentioning. It's worth mentioning that the book of Revelation comes to us as a revelation from another realm. Comes to us from another location, or, an, or if you like, it's a non-location revelation. It's not located in the earth. It's coming from a spiritual realm that is very real if you were there and visual and, and palpable and, and, you know, but I think if people saw the lamb with the seven eyes and seven horns and so forth and so on, in other words, a supernatural being that is not exactly the human Jesus image, I think it would freak them out quite a bit. That's about all I really had to say today. I pray for those who are, you know, watching the events upon the earth today and feeling extremely beleaguered from it all. But look, beloved one, you are here as a witness. God's avenging you. You know what's happened to you. You know you've eaten it. You've eaten uh, everything they've done to you. You've, 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 you've never been invited in. And now you can rejoice over that fact. They did not offer to make you a made man. <laughs> and now you can rejoice over that fact. Because they have to take an oath to the devil to be one of them. You know, it's well known that there is not a guild upon the earth, not an institution where there is not some sort of soul scalping uh, operation going on.
that men must, you know, relieve themselves of their souls in order to then gain a ticket to the world or to their fiefdom or whatever kind of folly it is they feel they're engaging in or, well, I think they think it's important, so. But it has absolutely nothing to do with reality. None of these castles made of sand that they built have anything to do with reality whatsoever. And the proof of this is in the fact that when people die, they cannot take it with them. You can't take it with you. So therefore, how relevant is it if it, if it doesn't go to the realm of reality, which is the, the, the place where the seven seals were in a book that were about to be opened, that is reality. And that place comes headlong into the earth at some point, which we call the New Jerusalem, which is really a metaphor for another complete other space and time. It's really not even space-time anymore. It's a different time. And there's a physical aspect to it that we go into this thing on God's timing no matter what. It's not that we're waiting, you know, that anything is at random. Everything is on a clock. So I can tell you that we are at the end of this phase and the next phase has to be the seventh um, aspect, which is the uh, final phase. And then eight would be completion. Or if you like, actually eight has to be um, not Jesus' reign upon the earth. That that's That's finishing up the seven. But the eight is really the new Jerusalem, which is the crown which crowns the whole creation and it's finished. Um, seen from an anthropomorphic uh, view, mankind is given life, then falls and is tortured and lives harshly, is redeemed and then is, is, is glorified by God and by the Lamb to be kings and priests upon the earth to rule over it, you know, to cast judgment, to um, to take charge of the entire creation of God. So from fallen and not untrustworthy and 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 lost to be redeemed and restored as you know as king. And in that sense, there's no difference between the lamb then and the, and the um, disciples. You know, the lamb has done his bit. The lamb is redeemed. So to say joint heir in Christ would be, you know, that's perfect. Or to say I am Christ is even more accurate. Christ, the Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, who rules over heaven and earth is what the position is in the end. So man becomes, um, in that sense, higher than the angels, you know, that the angels are at his beck and call. But what is he? He's not a man anymore. He's a, he's not a human anymore in the same sense that we are, you know, a, a time-space human of birth, suffering, death, you know, pain, suffering, few laughs, and, and goodbye. That's a sorry situation, sad situation. And that's why how Satanists justify themselves by saying, well, it's such a horrible life that I had to do something and this was offered, so I did it. And um, they, you know, they get caviar where the other humans eat crap, but they get to live 3.5 seconds longer and then, you know, they pay for it eternally. I mean, it's not a great deal. This is truth, children. This is truth. And um, it won't ever be anything other than what was stated here today. It will never change. It will never be anything else. You can be satanic, I suppose, and say, well, what about all the other philosophies and cultures and this and that? I'm saying, well, what culture are we talking about here? This is not even a culture upon the earth. But what about all the other revelations and all the uh, the things that are talked about of, you know, and everything that explains the spiritual realms and all the, you know, the folklore and Islam and Judaism and, and um, you know, and, 
and 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 Hinduism and Buddhism and all that, and it's not contradicting anything I've said. That's for sure. Let the word of God prove itself to you. If you think that this is the same text as you read in any other quote holy book end quote, then it hasn't proven itself to you. You know, you're dealing with a supernatural reality today. You've been taken into the spirit far, far away from your homes. Far away from your problems and your concerns, which now seem trivial. To be told that, you know, um, a greater story about what it all means, which means that you who are here, who are in the Lamb's Book of Life, are really, in a sense, the two witnesses in a sense, but it's not, not exactly. But it, it, I can say this, you are at least a witness to what God is doing on the earth because he always has his witnesses. He has his prophets and he has his witnesses. To, to, so they witness what he's doing so they give glory unto the Lord that the Lord is the one doing it. It's not man, it's not, you know, and there's quite a few people that are looking at the weather and going, yeah, God's doing it. And they're not looking at harp and they're not looking at you know, they're not putting the blame or impugning man. But there'll be a confusion there. Satan has his technology, so there will be a confusion. Was it really God? You see? There's always going to be that blocking of the faith. The only remedy to that is to be like a pure heart, like a child. And just take it on face value. And just go with it. Otherwise, you'll sit there like a doubting Thomas and be tortured every day of your life. Did God really? Oh, well, let me prove it to you. Someone sitting there at their desk in, their, uh, in a robe, slung over a chair, looking at the computer, listening, and getting... Slightly angry, and I have no idea why. Or feeling distraught and disheveled. And is beleaguered with all the problems. And is listening in the middle of the night or the early wee hours of the morning. Looking for a little peace. And I'm here to say, brother, peace has come. Rejoice, the word has been revealed to you as real. Otherwise, I wouldn't be talking to you. And so let that be a, at least a beginning. And you can take the rest of the word like that. And this is not the last time a supernatural thing is going to happen to you. You're going to see many such things start connecting and reconnecting and, and all that. And with that, I really do, I must go because the angel dogs rule my life. <laughs> no, that's all we have to say today. And with that, I say, I love you. I pray for you and I will see you mysteriously next time.